Hey there, it's Jim from Janku, and today I want to take a look at the defer keyword in Go. So I'm going to start over here by just creating a new folder, and let's call this defer demo. And let's just open this folder in VS Codium. So I'm just going to drag this over VS Codium, open that folder up, and let's come over here and let's add a new file inside this folder, and we'll call this main.go. And then inside main, let's start it off with the package main. So this is the package namespace here. And then let's create a function here called main. And then in here, we can call a new function. Let's say defer test is our function name. And then below, let's just define that function. So I'm going to find a new function here. I'm going to call it defer test. And then in defer test, I'm actually just going to print a line. So I'm going to do a format print line and I'm going to say hi. Now, if I control S to save this, you'll see that it automatically imports the format package. So format's what we're using to actually print the line. And then I'm gonna come back up here to the main function and I'm gonna add a new print line. So I'm gonna format print line again. And I'm going to say by. And I'll control save this. Now I'm going to press control tilde to pop up my terminal and we're already over here in our defer demo folder. So if I list the files, you can see that we have main go here. And what I can do here is I can run a go build to create a binary for this program. If I list the files again, you see we now have a binary name, the same name as our folder that we created over here. So defer demo in this case. And then I could run that binary by doing a dot forward slash defer demo. And it does exactly what you might expect it to do. So if we come down here, function main gets run from the top to the bottom. It hits defer test. It calls that function, which prints out the line high. And then it comes back up here and it continues execution after this and hits the next print line where the word is by. And you can see that it prints out high and by below here. Let me just close this file browser so it's a little easier to see what's going on. I'll bump up the size a little bit. Okay. And let me just change the window here. So I'll just shrink this down so it's a little easier to see. Now, what's interesting with defer is if we add this defer keyword before we call our defer test function, so this is a special keyword. You can see that its syntax highlights into a purple color here. And if I were to control save this, so control S, and I were to build the binary one more time, so I gotta run go build. And if I run that function, you'll see that now it says buy high, which is the opposite of what it was saying before. So it said high buy, and now it says buy high. So what's happening here is when you add a defer keyword to a function like this, it defers the execution of this function until everything within its enclosing function, so in this case, function main, has returned. So it comes down here, starts at the top, function main, hits the defer keyword, skips down, runs everything else. We could run multiple lines here if we wanted to. So we could run another format print. And we could say, goodbye. And actually, let's come up here and I'll just copy and paste this above. And I'll do a control S to save it. And let's just build this again and run it. And you notice it says goodbye and hi. And hi is still run after all the preceding lines since the defer keyword is there. So basically, it comes here, skips, runs everything else until the enclosing function is done executing, then comes back up and runs the function that is being called. Now, one interesting point here is any arguments that are passed to this function are actually executed when they first are run and not when they are deferred. So let's just show a quick example of that. I'm going to come up here and I'm going to make a global variable. So I'll say var thing and I'll make this a string. And then at the top of this function, I'll make thing equal to x. And then I'll define a new function down here called func make thing y. And then I'll pass a thing parameter here. And then I'll just set thing equal to y. And then up here inside the defer test, I'm going to pass an argument of a function. So I'm going to say make thing y and I'll pass thing in here. 
And then let's just come down here and let's print what thing is at this point in time. And I'll control S to save that. And we have some errors here. So first of all, I need to define the type that thing is for this argument here. And then let's just return something arbitrary. So let's return thing called. And that way, when we actually have to pass something here, so thing is a variable that's getting used here. We'll say thing return, and we'll just format print line of thing returned. And let's control S to save this. Oh, of course, I have some more mistakes, so we have to define a return type here. So our return item is a string. And then let's come down here and let's define this as a string type again. And let's control S, save that. Okay, now we're in a little bit better shape. I know this example is getting a little confusing, but we'll step through it in a second. Let's just come up here and let's run go build one more time. And then let's execute the defer demo binary. Okay, so what do we have going on here? We have X by thing called high. The issue here, so you can see that basically when we call this, we're defining X, it runs this function here, and then we're trying to execute this argument here with this make thing Y function, except thing is not becoming Y before the thing is printed here. So it's still X, you can see that first print line there. And then it prints by right after that. And then it goes down and it runs thing called, and then it runs high at the bottom here. So the issue is we actually have to pass this as a pointer. So this thing variable that we are changing down here is actually a local variable to this make thing y function. And we wanna change the actual global variable that's defined up here. So if we come over here to thing, and we add an ampersand there, and then add a star in front of your type declaration there, and then add it in front of this variable here, and then control S to save that, and we'll just come, we'll run our build one more time, and then we'll run this. And now you'll see that this variable is y instead of x. I know there's a lot of things going on here, and this is moving away from a beginner example, but essentially what's happening is we're defining a global variable at the top up here. So we're defining thing, and we're saying that it's of type string, but we're not giving it a value. So by default, it gets the value of just two quotes next to each other, just empty quotes. And then we start with the main function here and we start from the top. We defined that global variable as X. So we assign a value X to it. Then we run a defer on a function that we've named defer test. And inside that we pass a function as an argument. So make thing Y and we pass an argument of thing to that argument function. And now what happens here is even though this function defer test execution is the is deferred until the end of the function. So after by is run, the execution of this argument, it happens immediately once it runs to this line. So make thing Y with thing being passed in gets run. So make thing Y is defined down here. It is passed thing as a pointer. So we get the actual variable here. And if we change it, it changes it in all the scopes. So we change it to Y. Then we just return thing is called. And then we come up here and we print what thing is. So that's where we get the Y. And then we print the next line, so we get by down here. And then what's happening is this return value from the make thing y function, this, this string here, is being passed as an argument since we're executing this function initially to the defer test. If you come down here, we have thing return, so that's this value here, is being passed as an argument down here. So this parameter then gets printed down here. So the thing return, so this is where, so thing return is returned up here, but it's actually printed down here, and then high is run. So that's the execution order of these things. I know that's a lot. Hopefully you're all still with me. The thing that you really need to keep in mind here is the execution of this function happens after everything within the enclosing function runs, but the execution of the arguments here get executed immediately. So an example of where I use this in the real world is on our project Plenty, which is a static site generator with a Go backend and a Svelte front end. We basically have this benchmarking function here. So benchmarking will essentially do an elapsed time to see how long things are taking to run. 
And what we do here, so we define this in here and we check the elapsed time. So we get a time parameter here and we check how much time has elapsed. And then we just put that as a defer at the front of each one of these commands. So we defer the benchmark here and then we start the time now. So what happens is as soon as this data source function is called, the time now starts immediately and it doesn't check the benchmark elapsed time until after everything within this. So this whole enclosing function gets run. So it comes down here, runs all this code, comes down to the bottom. And then as it's wrapping up here with the return statement, it goes and actually checks the elapsed time there. But in order for that to work, the timer has to start immediately at the top. So the time dot now starts immediately and it starts that counter. So you can check the distance between those. Let's just show what that might look like in code here in a simpler example. So let's come over here and let's clean up a lot of this here. We don't need this make thing Y anymore. Let's get rid of that. And let's get rid of this. Delete that. Delete this. And let's remove that. So let's run a time dot now control save. And when I control save that, it adds the time package. So we're giving it time now here. And then down here, defer test is no longer getting a string. So we're getting something, we'll call this a variable called start. And this is of type time dot time. And then we can check the elapsed time here. So we can make a new variable called elapsed. And since we're declaring it, we need to do a colon equals. And then we can run a time since. And then we take the start variable, which we're passing in here. And that's the value of this time dot now. And then if I control save this, it looks like we have an error here. So this actually needs to call the now function. So let's control save that now. And now it's just saying elapsed variable is declared but never used. So we're just going to put the elapsed time right here and control S to save it. And now what's happening here is it's going to come up here. And again, it's always going to start at the main function. It's going to start running this. It's going to try to run the defer test, but it's going to see the defer keyword. So it's going to pause on the execution of this until after everything in the main function is run, but it's going to look to the argument here that's being passed, which is time dot now function, which is going to start a timer essentially. And this will start immediately. And then it'll run to the next line where it prints by. And then after by is completed and there's nothing left in this enclosing function, it will come down and it'll actually run defer test with the value that was already started evaluating up here, the start time. And then we'll define the elapsed variable, which will give us the time since the start. And this is all coming from the time package. This is a built-in go package. And then we'll print out the elapsed value here. So we've saved this. Let's come down here and this will be a very short period of time because it doesn't take very much time to print out by, but let's just take a look at what this looks like. Let's go build our binary. Let's run our binary. So forward slash defer demo. And you can see here that we have by printed and then it took 32.74. I believe this is microseconds. And so a thousand microseconds makes up a millisecond. So this is a very short period of time. This executes very fast. But the defer keyword is a great way to set up things like timers, just like this example. The last thing we need to cover here is just the fact that the defer keyword works in a last in first out order. So for instance, if we were to do something like a for loop here, let's do a for. We're saying I, we're defining that to zero and we're saying as long as I is less than the count. So the count, let's just say this is 10, then we'll increment I. And then if we were to format, print the line here, and we'll just print what I is. And let me just control S to save. Let's just show what this looks like normally. So I think you can probably expect what it'll be. I'm gonna build this. And then I run the binary, I'll expand this. And you see that this counts exactly the way you expect. It starts at zero and it goes to nine. And now if we were to add the defer keyword in front of this, so in front of the print line here, if we were to defer this and let me control save and I'll build this one more time and run this again, you notice now that it counts from nine to zero. So it's the opposite way you would expect. And basically what's happening here is every time this loop runs, 
it's running a defer on this, and then it's doing last in, first out. So since the last one in the defer is nine, since nine is the last one before i is less than 10, then it runs the nine first, and then it goes in the opposite order. So nine, eight, seven, down to zero, which was the first one that was called. And then since defer was actually even called before the zero loop had run, defer is called at the very end, and that's where you get the 128.011 microseconds printed at the bottom. So that's just basically executing the defer test function where we're printing the elapsed time. Hopefully that helps clear up the defer keyword in Go. If this was helpful for you, please give the video a thumbs up just so YouTube knows to share it with other folks. And if you like this kind of content, please subscribe to our channel for more videos like this in the future. All right, thank you. Take care. Bye.